Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Inside Stallion Football. My name is Armand Brody and I'm pleased to be joined once again by head coach Devontae Holloman. Coach Holloman, it's good to be with you one more time. Glad to be back. Yes, indeed. 17-14 to 14 was the score on Saturday as South Point took down the Northwestern Trojans. And uh, we're going to get your thoughts from that game, Coach. So uh, first of all, your first game back mm -hmm. at South Point, head coach, how did it feel for you? Um, it brought back some chills, memories, you know, butterflies. Um, anytime you're coaching in a stadium that you played in, you know, that you know brought back thoughts of my playing days, of course. But I was able to shake that fast and, um, you know, try to get the boys ready to play. And for the most part, um, I thought they did a great job fighting through, you know, the couple of things that, that you know, the adversity that happened. Um, and we were able to pull out the win. Were you nervous? Uh, always. You know, I'm always nervous before kickoff. Did we do enough? Did we prepare for this, prepare for that? Um, you know, what are they going to do, especially with those early season games, because you don't really get a chance to scout, per se. Um, the scouting that we did was based off a of scrimmage or two scrimmages. So, we, we, you know, we really didn't have much to really prepare for. We were um, expecting some things that we really didn't prepare for, and uh, we adjusted in the second half and ended up coming back and winning. How can you tell, or, or what signs can you look for to let you know when your team is ready to play? I told them before the game, you know, they had a different look in their eyes. You know, we practice, you know, on day to day, um, and just the way that they were looking and the way that, you know, they kind of conveyed themselves or composed themselves throughout the day, um, I knew that they were ready to go. Uh, were you pleased with uh, how your team fed off the energy of the crowd? A lot of South Point folks there. Yeah, I was I was pleased to look up, you know, the, the couple of times I did look back in the stands and see how many people were there. You know, the student section uh, was there, you know, and I hope that grows a little bit more. But, um, you know, the, it seemed like, like old times, like the whole city was there watching. And, uh, you know, a really great game. Of course, um, you know, we would like to be ahead and, and be a little bit more comfortable than we were. <laughs> um, but, you know, those, those types of games are what you can kind of build a season off of. You know, um, later on down the road, if we ever end up in that position again, you know, I can bring it back to, hey, we were down 14-3 versus Northwestern and we came back and won it. So, um, like I said, I was proud of our, our boys. I was proud of our fans. And it was an overall great night. Um, I think I had about 15 family members there, something I haven't had in a long time. So um, it was really cool and, uh, you know, I'm happy to be home. First text you got after the win? I had uh, about 75 text messages <laughs> after. Um, you know, my dad tried to text me at halftime and tell me what to say to the boys. Um, you know, just different people congratulating me and, you know, I, I kind of, I ain't going to say got in an argument with my family, but, I, you know, I don't want it to be about me, you know, even though, you know, in some instances it is. But, um, you know, I'm more focused. My, my focus is always on the boys and my team, you know, the players. Um, so I kind of got in a, you know, a debate, I ain't going to say an argument with my family. You know, I just, I don't want to, I don't want it to be all about me. You know, the players are out there, to, they're the ones working hard, making the plays. I'm just a coach trying to put them in position. It seemed like the game plan was to get Coy Chambers going early. Um, the running game. Yeah, we have a pretty big old line, um, but uh, and you know we have great running backs. Um, Quay's a really good running back. He can, you know, he, he's not he's not fast, but um, you know he gets to where he needs to be. He's, he's a lot, really powerful. Um, Nigel Moore, I think he did a good job stepping in, and you can see that 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 tandem coming. I um, mean, it'll, it'll get better as the week goes along. But um, for the most part, after looking at the game, we were pretty balanced pass and run. So um, you know you can't say we favored one more or the other. Um, we really didn't play that many plays on offense, to be honest. Um, a lot of three and outs for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, made a lot of mistakes on those. But Quay did a good job, especially, uh, you know, breaking some tackles, making some plays, and getting in the end zone twice and uh, putting us ahead. I read the summary of the game in the Rock Hill Herald, and uh, the writer said that the game didn't have a lot of big plays. Do you care about things like that? I think that's what the fans want to see. You know, uh, all in all, I'm, I'm a defensive guy, man, so I'm cool with an Alabama LSU score 3-0 to zero or 6-3 to three and stuff like that. Um, you know, as a defensive guy or a defensive coach, um, you don't want any big plays. So, um, you know, from that aspect, we made enough plays to win, and at the end of the day, that's all I care about. I didn't get an official count. Maybe you have it, but I counted at least five or six sacks. Um, there were nine, nine throughout the game. Yeah. Eight of them by D linemen. We, uh, you know, we had Ron Terry Aldridge, who was our defense player of the week. He had three sacks on his own, um, a couple of TFLs, and I'm, I'm still, um, you know, fighting the refs on whether or not he intercepted that ball. I think he did. Um, but we also had a sophomore step up in his first varsity game and have three sacks as well, J.J. Hicklin. Um, I think the future's bright for him. Um, and then um, Darian Irvin, 
uh, had two sacks himself. Um, you know, didn't he's a, he's a smaller guy on the defensive line and, and knows how to use his, his speed and his hands well. Um, and then one of our linebackers, we finally were able to get to some pressure. But um, anytime you rush three linemen and get eight sacks, that's a good night. How did you slow down Jakar Caldwell? They were a big wide receiver from Northwestern. Uh, we really didn't know how good he was. You know, we knew coming in that there was a lot of talk about him, but uh, we were able to be aggressive with our corners. We threw a lot of different guys at him. We play a lot of different styles, um, just to try to throw him off. And uh, like I said, the D line did such a good job getting pressure. Um, a lot of times it was hard for a quarterback to find him, but uh, you know he is a really good receiver. But um, in the second half, we adjusted and, and kind of took him away. Talik, did he cramp up at the end of the third quarter there? I know Omega started the fourth. Yeah, we had a lot of cramps. Uh, it, was, it wasn't only Talik, it was Talik, it was a couple corners. Um, it was just everybody. We got to do a better job preparing. And um, I told the boys yesterday, um, you know, blame can go a lot of different places. You know, we did have an extra day last week, so um, we used every day to prepare. Um, so this week we'll, we'll kind of rein back a little bit, take care of their legs, take care of their body. But ultimately, it's up to them to drink water and. You know, be careful. I'll be watching what they eat in the lunchroom this this week and, and what they're drinking and stuff like that. All those dudes that go to the soda machine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let me let me get the diet, Dr. Pepper. You you get water and get <laughs> ready. So I'll be watching them, but they have to do a better job taking care of their bodies. Too. So let's look ahead now to a Rock Hill. Got a little bit of taste in our mouths from mm -hmm. Rock Hill from last year. First time they had beaten us since 2009. Your last uh, your your year here. Um, how does that sort of play into? your preparation for this week? Uh, we'll mention it, um, but you know, it's a, it's a new team and a new year, and I think uh, without without it being said, of course, they have that, that reminder in the back of their minds. Um, they seemed really focused yesterday, something that we lacked a lot of last week, so um, I definitely sense a feel, you know, after getting that first one under your belt, I think we all had high expectations, and we wanted to you know, the score to be a lot different than what it was, um, and you know, I think we kind of got humbled a little bit um, Saturday and uh, looking forward to a great matchup against Rock Hill and our players coming back um, and putting on that performance that they want to put on. Congratulations on the first win. I appreciate it. Looking forward to Rock Hill. Should be on, a good game. Uh, Friday. I hope everybody comes out. It's our home game and uh, you know, uh, without saying it uh, to the kids yet, my goal is we don't lose at home. All right, there you have it, folks. We don't lose at home. Make sure you come out Friday as South Point hosts Rock Hill for the first home game of the season. Hope to see you there. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's at South Point Stallions. We have a host of Twitter pages you can follow us at as well. They'll be on the screen uh, as the video is going along here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.